I'm Julie Von Limden, and I've been a partner at St. Mark's Church for a very long time. Um, but several years ago, I started getting more interested and involved in the mission aspect of the church. And in 2016, I went with the team to Haiti and enjoyed that very much. Um, it was very rewarding, uh, but I was still looking for something I could do more regularly. And the next year, they started talking a lot more about prison ministry and the team that goes to Anamosa. My experience going to Anamosa has been very eye-opening. Um, prior to being a part of this team, I had not really thought twice about incarceration. So going there weekly and meeting with the men really made me realize there's so many reasons that crime is committed. committed. There's, um, you know, sometimes it's just out of desperation. Sometimes it's an addiction um, that gets them there. Sometimes it's just poor choices that they make. Us going to Anamosa has really helped me build relationships with the prisoners and have a better, better understanding of their circumstances growing up, the environment they were in, um, and how important it is for them to have relationships with the community. Because regardless of what they're in there for, people still need relationships and they still need people in their lives and they still need love. When I first started going, I was a little bit nervous because I don't feel like I'm an expert by any means on the Bible or um, leading conversations in that arena. But what I soon found was that most of them were very adept at it and they have spent a lot of time reading and researching and are very passionate about it. And so I ended up learning a lot more from them than they've probably ever learned from me. Many of them have been a great inspiration to me and really given me more confidence to have conversations like this and um, to do more book studies and to learn more about justice in general. Then COVID hit and we were not able to return to prison in person anymore. And so um, it was very disappointing for us and for the men serving. And um, we were able to correspond by letters here and there, but otherwise we have not really been able to have any contact with them. And so the Alpha team here decided to do a study on outrageous justice and learned a lot about that. Um, and also we started doing research uh, about reintegration programs and reentry. So when the men are actually leaving prison, are we putting them in an environment that they can be successful and not return right back to prison because we've just put them back in the same surroundings they had the first time that they went there. So this has been really encouraging that even though with COVID, um, the door was closed at prison for right now, but another one was opened by us kind of going out there and looking for other ways we can help. And so now, you know, when we get through all this, we're gonna have two different areas that we can focus on, we can visit um, the men in prison, but we can also be focused on, as a church, how can we help people coming out of prison? I am fortunate enough to work for a company that promotes respect for people and really heavily focuses on diversity and inclusion. And so earlier this year, in January of 2020, a coworker and I launched a Christian fellowship group at my work. Um, my office holds just over maybe six to 700 people and we immediately had around 140. We were trying to come up with um, someone to partner with in the community. Who did we want to um, reach out to? Who did we want to volunteer with? Who did we want to support and build relationships in the community with? And we hadn't really come to a conclusion on that before COVID started. So we immediately got deployed to work from home at the end of March. And so we shifted our focus to how we could get Bible studies going um, because we could do those online. So we switched over, we opened up some opportunities with the uh, Bible studies. And one of the things we offered was the Outrageous Justice Study, which was what the Alpha team had done together. Um, so I have been leading that study with a group of people at my work, um, which has piqued more interest in this arena and the area of justice. So I've been able to share all the progress that the Alpha team has made with re-entry programs and HOPE CDA. The team voted to focus on HOPE CDA. So now, you know, what has grown out of this whole year and the Alpha team and us looking for opportunities, I've been able to actually take and um, spread more because I work for a company who, who is allowing us to also try to network and build the community. At the end of the day, 
You know, we're all broken, we all fall short, but we're all loved and forgiven, and we're called to love our neighbors. And so I'm just very thankful for the mission opportunities here at St. Mark's and proud to be a member of this family. Hey, welcome everybody to St. Mark's Online. I'm Pastor Paul. This is Mr. Jason Christensen. Hey, welcome everybody. Super awesome to have you here. Pastor Paul, what are we talking about today? Uh, we're starting a new series called 3D Mission, and we have some guest speakers today, uh, Keon and Stephanie Carter. They're the pastors of Wellington Heights Community Church. It is going to be a great message. People are going to love it. We're talking about Really, what does it mean to be a neighbor? How do we love our neighbors? And I, I can't think of a more appropriate time to do that than post-election when we don't know who the president is and other people, right? Yes. Right. Yes. yes. Exactly. This is weird. Exactly. So it's a good time to love our neighbors and to talk about that. But Wellington Heights is a church that we are looking to do uh, more in partnership with. And um, so we're just really great people. It's, it's awesome. Great. It's great. Awesome. Very. I'm super excited. Yep. So now we have a countdown for worship to start. Okay. But I figure since we're doing 3D missions, let's count down from D to A. Okay, I could do that. All right. I think I got let's it. Give it a shot. Ready? That's right, yeah. D, D C, B, A. Welcome to St. Mark's Online. We're super excited to have you here with us. We invite you to sing. We're going to sing Lion and Lamb this morning. Sing with us. God is the lion, the lion of Judah. He is 
flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Will you pray with me? God, we invite your presence here with us today. We invite you in our lives, and we invite you to come with us as we go out, as we live out the mission of bringing your name and your love and the love of your son Jesus to the people here, in our city, and around the world. God, I want to pray for COVID-19. God, if it's your will, please take it from us. But if that's not your will, then bless us, God. Watch over us. Keep us safe. Fill us with your love. Help us to remember that we wear masks as our cross to bear. We wear masks to love each other. Not because it's what I want to do, but because we're called to be the presence of the love of your son Jesus. It's in the love, the wonderful name of Jesus, that we pray to you this morning. I want to invite you to pull out your cell phones as you're watching this, and you're going to send us a text message. You're going to send a text to the number 94,000, and the content of that message is going to be the word hello SM, H-E-L-L-O-S-M, all one word. Don't let it autocorrect because it will try to autocorrect. You'll get a link there in your messages. Click on that link and uh, fill out our form and let us know that you're here with us. Let us know if you're a guest. Let us know if you're a longtime friend. We really look forward to hearing from you. This is our month to honor the missions. We're speaking about 3D missions this month. So right now, we want to play a video uh, highlighting some of our prison ministry that we do here at St. Mark's. In Proverbs 31, verses 8 and 9, we are called to speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Ensure justice for those being crushed. Yes, speak up for the poor and helpless and see that they get justice. St. Mark's Prison and Reentry Team would like to share with you what we have been learning, things that may surprise and even shock you. Join with St. Mark's Prison and Reentry Team as we strive to live justly, love mercy, walk humbly, and speak up for those who can't. By the power of Jesus Christ. 
Welcome everybody to St. Mark's Online. I'm Pastor Paul Hennings. What a great video there showing what God is doing through our prison ministry here at St. Mark's. I'm glad you've joined us online today. We're starting a new series. It's a special series talking about what God is doing here through St. Mark's in our community and around the world. We call this 3D Mission, and we're talking about how God is using us to reach the nations with the gospel. I'm Pastor Paul Hennings, and if you are a guest with us today, we're so glad that you're here. You've heard this already, but you can text hello SM to 94000. We'd sure love to know that you've, you're here joining us today. And so we're going to uh, start this series off with talking about what it means to be a neighbor. And I have some special guests, but before I introduce them to you, let me read to you the, the scripture that just is speaking to us through this whole series. It comes from Acts 1, verse, uh, Acts 1, verse 8, and it says this, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. That's what this series is all about. That's what we want to be all about as a church. Well, let me introduce to you some guest speakers we have here today. Come on up here, Stephanie and Keon. I'm so excited um, to introduce them to you and a partnership that we are developing here at St. Mark's. Come on over here. Good to have you all. Have a seat. You could say hi to everybody out there. So Keon and Stephanie are the pastors of Wellington Heights Community Church here in Cedar Rapids. And we've been developing a partnership and we're still uh, moving forward in that partnership. Um, and it probably really blossomed after the derecho uh, as we kind of teamed up with Eight Days of Hope. But um, why don't you guys tell us a little bit about yourselves and... Um, how many kids you have, and all that good stuff. And then tell us a little bit about why you started Wellington Heights Community Church. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm Keon, my wife Stephanie, um, we co-pastor uh, Wellington Heights Community Church. We have, we've been married for six years, uh, just celebrated our six-year anniversary um, on, in September. And we have a uh, five-year-old uh, and a two-year-old. Um, yeah, a little bit about our. So we've we've um, we've been in ministry for uh, uh, a combination of, of ten years um, uh, together, and uh, we've always had a passion for um, just um, under resourced communities. Uh, we believe that um, uh, there are no God forsaken places; there are only church forsaken places, and so we've always been. Uh, drawn to uh to places where we we believe the least are, of these are but uh we come we want to come into relationship and mutual relationship with with people and so yeah yeah so we have launched wellington heights community church and we've done it in the midst of a global pandemic and a That's natural great. disaster but i don't think that there could be a better time to start a church especially in a unique neighborhood like wellington heights um, it's just a great time to just be the church right now. And our mission statement is joining God and reconciling all things through worship, reconciliation, and neighborhood development. Yeah, yeah. Neighborhood development. So that, that's what we're talking about today. So when we think about the scripture that I just read from Acts about Jerusalem and the Judea and Samaria and then the ends of the earth, the scripture passage there is... is um, it's focused on how the, the mission of the Christian church goes beyond just uh, right in front of us. It goes to the ends of the earth. But it starts in Jerusalem. So everybody who heard that, they were like, okay, that's right here. That's my neighbor. And so today we're talking about what it means to be a neighbor and neighborliness. And I love the fact that in your mission um, and in your life, okay, which is, I think, tremendous, uh, that you guys have said, we're not only going to reach the Wellington Heights area, we're going to live there and we're going to be neighbors there. So talk about what neighborliness means and what does it mean for you guys to be a neighbor? Yeah, when I, when I think about neighborliness, I, I really kind of think all the way back to, to Genesis 1, right? You know, God has this, this mission for every, everything to be in great relationship, right? 
And um, God wants good relationship with God, self, others, and the rest of creation. And you see Adam and his wife, when they eat the fruit, right, they, they begin to not be so good neighbors, right? They're, they're not good neighbors to each other. And, and then you go on to, to, to uh, Cain, and he's really not a good a, a neighbor to, to Abel, right? We know what happens. Um, he kills his brother. And um, there's this reality of like, there's this relationship piece. God wants us to be in, in relationship uh, with, with each other and in and, and him. And I think what it means to be neighborly, um, there's this reality of, of um, there's, a, there's a reality of uh, neighborliness means withdrawing of yourself so that others may flourish, right? We, 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 we really struggle with, with loving people who are, who, who we don't like, who are not like us, who don't have the same political uh, v- uh, views or, or the religious views. We don't want to love them. But Jesus really does something and says something that's, that really just um, shuts that up. He says, love your enemy and bless them, right? He says, love your enemies and bless them. No, no other leader in the world has ever said that about, uh, about our, our, your, your, um, your enemies, and so we, we have a lot of work to do uh, when it comes to uh, being neighborly. Um, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I think it's interesting. So our five-year-old, when he was three, we were learning about, like, what it means to be a neighbor. And he asked the question, well, who is my neighbor? And I thought, Miles, that's really insightful <laughs> from the scripture passages we've been reading. Um, yeah, who is our neighbor? I think we can tend to just think physical proximity or people who look like us and agree with us but the scriptures throughout the new testament jesus challenges that and he says to look bigger don't just limit your scope of who your neighbor is and i think our love for god as we continue to learn and grow in love for god it increases our love for our neighbor and so our love for god just naturally flows into love for neighbor and that who our neighbor is continues to increase as we grow in love with God. And I also think like as we grow in love with our neighbor and practicing that, um, our life begins to change. It begins to transform. So I think before we can kind of have a mindset of me and consumerism and like ownership of what we have, and then as we grow in our relationship with God and our love for our neighbors, um, it changes into we and it changes into stewardship of what we have and it turns into service and mutuality and relationships. Yeah, that's good. I, I think that when it comes to neighborliness, the neighborliness, um, practically, how when I think about how do we be good neighbors, I think it starts with kind of doing some introspection. Like, who are the people who you 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 find hardest to love? Mm-hmm. Why? Why? Because because though that is not of Christ, right? Um, I think I think really. It, it, if you really want to get practical, get a pen and pencil and write some people down and, and really start to ask Holy Spirit, what is going on in me? David asked, uh, I believe it's in Psalm 139, like, Lord, search my heart, examine me. And if there is anything that you don't like, uh, blot it out, like, like gut it out so that I can follow you. And so I think we need to really do some introspection um, 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 as we look to be neighborly. Yeah, that's really good. I, I love what you brought up, Jesus' words about loving your enemy, especially the week after an election, right? Um, where, you know, when we think about neighbors and, and think about people that we're engaged with at work or at school or just right across the street, they can be very different from us. And some of those differences were really highlighted this last week, possibly. I had this feeling um, during the season of, of, of politics I thought to myself multiple times, I, I wish we could go back to the week after the derecho, right? Uh, because we put all that stuff aside and we were neighbors. Can we just go back there for a second? Uh, because we partnered together, St. Mark's, Eight Days of Hope, Wellington Heights, and we, you know, we came down to Wellington Heights and we, we did some work together there. Can you just run back a little bit with us and, and tell us what, what y'all were doing to bless your neighborhood there. Yeah, so we recognized right away, I mean, all of us, we didn't have power or food. So 
we started organizing like the day after the storm, having some, we just pulled out our grills, anyone who had a grill, and we were grilling for the neighborhood. And then St. Mark's, we've talked to you guys, and then we organized a little bit bigger of a meal, and we had a supply drive with that. So we had essential supply stock ups, a meal, and people truly felt, not only the volunteers, but our neighbors really felt uplifted, and they said, gosh, it's just been such an, my soul feels lighter after this. And then we partnered with Eight Days of Hope with the laundry trailer, and what else? Am I yeah, um, St. Mark's, um, mm-hmm. we did a lot of um, like uh, tree removal, um, debris removal, all of that stuff. Um, moving things for people because, you know, houses were, were wrecked and things like that. And so it was just, it was really a play it by ear thing. We didn't really have our phones and p- praise God, we didn't have our phones, uh, you know. <laughs> so, but yeah, it was just a really um, incarnational thing. It, it One of the things that really, um, really stood out is it does matter. Proximity does matter, and especially in, um, uh, in, in, and under-resourced areas, um, and so we were able to really connect with some people, um, and much like a lot of different peop- uh, people during the derecho. But yeah, so it was it was a lot of fun. It was uh, to to be able to meet new people as well. So sure. One yeah. really neat yeah. thing. So we were doing the reconciling all things study during this time. Right. So we were in relationship with St. Mark's people, and we had some people text us and saying, "What are the needs right now? We'll do whatever we can to meet that." And I said, "Actually, we have." a need for ice because we don't have generators, a lot of them in our community. And so St. Mark's packed up tons of pickups of ice trucks and just went and passed out to front porches and met that need. And it was just wonderful. Yeah, the need, listening, so listening to the community is one of our huge values of Wellington Heights Community Church. And really what we mean by that is uh, we go to the speed of the, the community, so we are always asking the community what the needs are. Um, and uh, the, the derecho was a huge piece of that because the needs change from, from day to day to week to week, you know. And so, um, yeah, that was, that was good. Yeah, yeah. I just what a great example, I think, of the church. I, those days after the derecho, I just was so humbled to see the people of the church being neighbors. I mean, and we have stories here of people saying, I, I, haven't, I haven't talked to my neighbor in six years. And, and all of a sudden, we're holding barbecues together. And uh, what an opportunity. Um, so we're talking about neighborhoods. And I know that um, sometimes neighborhoods are built on homogeneity. And so uh, before we uh, this message, uh, Keon and I got together and we threw the word homogeneity out there. And that's a really big word, uh, but everybody knows it. You see it all the time. It's on your cartons of milk, right? <laughs> Homogenized milk. I have no idea what that means, but I do know the, the root word. And, and it, you want to talk just a little bit about uh, the error in our thinking about trying to make everything homogenous in the church. Yeah, I mean, homogeny, um, homogeny is uh, all about comfort. Um, homogeny uh, is, is, is really the, the, the sin of the Tower of Babel, right? Um, we all seek to, to homogenize. When we go into a large room, the first thing that we're looking for, the first thing we're looking for is someone who's just like me right? It's, it's race, it's gender, it's age. If, if you can't find that, then it's religion, politics, so on. We're trying to find a way for us to be comfortable. And that, that, that really dictates our whole lives. It really does, from, from grade school to, to 99 years old, right? Um, but when we, look, when we look at the gospel, when we look at what Jesus calls us to uh, in the great uh, commission, Right, he he calls us to make disciples of all nations, not not one nation, not not the nation that only looks like you or only thinks like you, um, but he of of all nations. And I think it's really important for us uh, who, who follow Jesus um, to to be a part of breaking the divide. You know, uh, uh, Sunday is the most divided day of the week, right? Um, and it's not because of the mosque, 
It's not because of businesses. It's because of the church, right? We go to our homogeny churches to worship the God of unity. See the, see the, um, the uh, oxymoron in that, right? Um, what does that say about, what does that say about uh, the God that, that, that loves all people? Uh, we have to be about, uh, we have to be about uh, unity, not uniformity. Um, and, and Jesus prays this, this beautiful prayer in, in John 17. May, may you be one as I and the Father are one. And he prayed that uh, our Lord and Savior, he could have prayed for anything before he stepped on that cross. He prayed for unity in the body. And, and so we have to start, start being serious about this. And so... Yeah, and I think the heartbreaking thing about your statement of Sunday being the most divided time of the week is I think we're okay with that. Mm -hmm. I think that some of us may even prefer it that way or just see it as normal. It's just how it is. Um, but we can't stay in that spot. We have to move forward and recognize that if one of the body of Christ is suffering, if our black and brown brothers and sisters are suffering. We also are suffering as well. Um, so we really have to proc become proximate to one another and learn and listen. And from there, we can really demonstrate the fullness of the gospel by coming together because of the gospel. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing becomes homogenized by accident, right? Like, like you, we have to look at the history of our nation, right? Um, we, you look at cities. Uh, you, you mentioned it before, uh, neighborhoods are divided. We know that. And I, I like to coin this, this term uh, comfortably segregated. Uh, we are comfortably segregated. We are so fine with the way things are right now um, as far as we're, we're, they're over there and I'm over here and I get to see them whenever I need to. Um, that, is not, that, is not, that is not the way of Christ. It just, it just isn't. Um, we have to be a part of breaking that that sinful cycle that, that divided neighborhoods in America. And so, yeah. 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 And yeah. we've committed to always living in an under-resourced neighborhood. So as we've been married six years, we've always lived in an under-resourced neighborhood. And I could not have learned more from people and the places. I've been stretched. I've grown. But... I've learned so much more about being a neighbor and it's switched my perspective of ownership to stewardship. Like if someone has a lawnmower that you're expected to share, mm -hmm. or if you have a cup of flour, you're expected to share. Um, so that's just been such a gift to me. And we live in a neighborhood with front porches and it's wonderful mm -hmm. to have people out on their front porch, stop by, say hi. So it's been a gift to not be in a neighborhood that's all the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is so easy to get comfortable in the church, isn't it? I, I mean, and then you read, you know, Jesus, uh, his great commission, and you read Acts, the day of Pentecost, and there are people from all over the world that are there. So they're all different races, colors, languages, education, all of that. And that's really a, um, a foreshadowing of what we're going to see in heaven. It's so funny, I was, I was thinking uh, this week, this last week we celebrated really the Reformation, and as Lutherans, that's really important for us, and what I find interesting is that most people, I don't think, understand that there are more Lutherans in Africa than there are in the United States of America. So Luther was a pasty white guy in Germany, right? And now most Lutherans are Africans. That, that to me, is just the beauty of the kingdom uh, being made known to all people. Tell me about how, you know, so Wellington Heights, obviously, uh, well, let me just ask you this. What is, what is your vision at Wellington Heights for bringing all people together? How do you plan to do that? Uh, what's, what's, the, what's the goal? How are you going to get there? Yeah, so um, I do believe that, I'll, I'll make this statement. I do believe that multiculturalism has to be intentional. It has to be uh, intentional on, on a leadership level. And so we're, as we are planting, we are starting with a, a, a goal of Revelation 7, all tribes, tongues, nations together, right? We want that on earth as it is in heaven. And so uh, as far as um, our vision for multiculturalism, like we, we, we see the value uh, in the image of God in all people, whether it be 
um, you're, you're in poverty or you, you're uh, upper middle class, white, black uh, refugee. And so I think uh, there's this piece of uh, getting to know uh, people in the neighborhood, getting to see where God is already, where is he already at work? And a lot of times with church plants, we have this, um, we have this idea where the only way you can tr- plant a church is, um, you know, you have to have this, uh, this great place with a building and then, um, and then you, you know, you have to have a date that's set and then you launch um, but no, we, we we have a very community development mindset. We we are um, with the community. The community gets to build the church with us, right? And so, I, God is already at work in Wellington Heights. We've only been there for three and a half years, and so we're meeting some amazing people um, who now are wanting to be a part. They've seen what God is doing through this vision, um, and and so we we get to be a part of of uh, this mutual relationship as God builds this church. Um, so yeah, just, any other thoughts? Yeah, I think just helpful debunking information that Wellington Heights isn't a super scary place that we can sometimes hear. It's a wonderful neighborhood. There's lots of great gifts and assets there and it's a diverse community. So I think being a church with the community, it just naturally becomes a diverse church because of the proximity. And who's involved. Yeah. yeah. What's great about churches joining together is that we can learn from each other. And I, I'm just giving you a sneak peek here, just real quick. We're looking to, to grow in our partnership with Wellington Heights uh, here come 2021. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, that's just a sneak peek I can't tell you all about right now. But uh, stay tuned for, for that information. But we're really excited about what God's doing there. Let's, uh, let's just wrap this up and come back to... Uh, Jesus and the gospel and how that impacts us and how that makes a difference for how we live our lives. Stephanie, before this, we were just talking real quick and totally a God thing. I mentioned a scripture passage. You said, oh yeah, I thought about that too. You want to just share that with people and what it, what it means for you? So um, we were talking about John 1, 14 is literally translated in one of the versions, I believe it's the message version, that the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. So I think that that's showing for us that God knew that for the gospel, for Jesus, for us to understand what all of this is about, that Jesus had to be proximate to us. And the same is true as we are filled with the Holy Spirit and go into his redemptive work in our community is that we have to become proximate to others. We have to literally move into the neighborhood. We have to flip our relationships from one of service and superiority to mutuality and just relationships and seeing one another with worth and dignity and value. That's good. That's good. I, how do you, how do you yeah, top I, that? I'm, I'm just, I'm just marveling in it right now. No, yeah. I, I, there's just big, this, all of this is wrapped up in the gospel, right? Like, and I see the gospel in two ways. So like there's the, the first part is uh, what Jesus did for us, right? He, his death, his resurrection, his life uh, on earth and, and his ministry, um, death and resurrection, right? Um, and then the second part is what the second part of the, uh, of the gospel, I believe, is what we get to join him in on, right? We get to join Jesus um, uh, and, and his work to reconcile all things, to restore all things now. A lot, of, a lot of people, they believe that, you know, we're supposed to, once we get saved, you know, just, just preach the gospel to a couple people. Hopefully they can get saved, but uh, everything will be better when Jesus comes back. You no, know, it says in Ephesians, uh, we've, been, we've been giving every spiritual blessing from heaven to do just that. No, to, to join God in restoring all things now. It starts now, right, um, on earth as it is in heaven. And so we got a lot of work to do. The, the gospel must be proclaimed and demonstrated by the church. The, the world is looking at the church. If, if we don't get racial reconciliation right, if we don't get this political dismay right, the world will never get it right. They're waiting for us. And they're looking at us and they're saying, what's going on? And so as, as we are salt and light and we've been, we've given 
been given every spiritual blessing. Uh, and we have to start, start loving. We have to start loving. So, yeah. Well, and what a privilege we've been given to share that good news that, that the word did become flesh and, and he humbled himself to the point of death on a cross. And, you know, I mean, just to think that he became like one of us, uh, to die for us, um, you know, it all starts there, doesn't it? And, and all of our, I think all of our theology, all of our action, everything that we do as a church all starts uh, from there. So that's really awesome. Well, I really appreciate y'all, uh, you know, joining me today. I love your ministry. I love uh, how you two just um, really live it out in, in your life. And uh, we've just been privileged here uh, to come alongside you, and, and we look forward to doing that in the future. Can I pray for you guys? Absolutely. All right. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for Keon and Stephanie and the calling that you've placed on their lives and the ministry that you've given Wellington Heights uh, Community Church. And God, we want to be together in, um, in sharing the gospel. We, churches aren't divided. We're united uh, through the gospel message. And so I thank you, Lord, already for the, the opportunities to join together in mission. And Lord, I look forward to, to future opportunities. We are, we are your people, God. Teach us to, to be neighbors. Teach us to love like Jesus. And remind us of the gospel every day, how deep and how high and how wide your love is for us. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for being here.
Thank you so much for joining us today. I invite you to text HelloSM to the number 94000 and let us know that you're here with us if you haven't had a chance to do that yet. We hope you're blessed here this morning. I know I was blessed by Stephanie and Keon being here. We want you to know that we're so thankful for any gifts that you give here at St. Mark's. There are three ways to do this. You can mail in your gift, you can text to give, and you can also give online. We, we know that God is at work in our community and we want you to look for Jesus this week and as you go out into the world and you connect faith and life, God's blessings to you.